Welcome back. We've launched our fifth season of Meet the Press Reports. It's our half-hour weekly show that does a deep dive on one issue per episode. This week, we look at the rise of theocracy in the United States. It includes the growing belief by some on the far right that there is not and never has been an actual wall of separation separating between church and state. We focus on Moscow, Idaho. It's a small college town near the border with Washington State where a pastor named Doug Wilson of Christ Church is embracing a form of Christian nationalism. Pastor Wilson told NBC News correspondent Ann Thompson that he's fighting secularism in what he calls a cold civil war. So in your version of a Christian town, would there be a place for non-believers? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Would, would yeah. there be a place for same-sex couples? But you mean legally? Yes. You, you mean like uh, marriage? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no marriage. But there'd be uh, same-sex couples. No marriage, even though it's the law of the land in the United States? Uh, just like Roe used to be, right? Reverend Dr. Elizabeth Stevens leads the Unitarian Universalist Church of the Palouse. In the public square, I don't see them representing Christianity. I don't see them representing the values that, that I find in the Bible. I see them representing patriarchy. I see them... Uh, fighting the culture war. You can't have a naval warfare without ships, and you can't have tank warfare without tanks. And as I tell Christians all around the country, you can't have culture war unless you have a culture. You can see the full episode of Meet the Press Reports on Peacock, YouTube, Roku, or anywhere you get NBC News videos. New episodes first air on NBC News Now on Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So let me bring the panel back. Peter, this is not sort of disaggregated from the world of Trump. In many ways, it's fused with Trumpism. In fact, let me put a mash together of, of some candidates that Trump has endorsed mm -hmm. who are all sort of preaching this, there's no wall yeah. uh, between church and state. Take a look. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk. In November, we're going to take our state back. My God will make it so. We need to be the party of nationalism, and I'm a Christian, and I say it proudly. We should be Christian nationalists. Now, Donald Trump has embraced this. Evangelicals embraced Trump. It was sort of a grand bargain, right? They seem to get what they want, and it is fused into something else yeah. here. In your reporting on Trump, how, how does he view this sort of Christian uh, nationalism that, that is attaching itself to Trumpism. Well, and it's very opportunistic, of course. Obviously, it's not saying anything surprising to say that Donald Trump is not exactly the most uh, religious person in the world. Uh, certainly his values are not mm -hmm. particularly Christian. But he recognized in 2016 something important, which is that these uh, Christian conservatives were important to his victory, right? That was something, therefore, he needed to pay attention to. He once told, in fact, Lindsey Graham, you played that uh, clip mm -hmm. from him earlier, he once told uh, Lindsey Graham about these pastors who called him to tell him they were praying for him in the middle of impeachment. He says, those effing Christians just love me. I mean, he's very opportunistic and kind of cynical about it, but he recognizes that it's important to his political success. And they have recognized that it's important, uh, that his success is important to them because he gave them a lot of what they wanted in terms of judges, in terms of policies. He was the most overtly anti-abortion president and arguably the one most responsible sure. for the overturning of Roe v. Wade. You know, uh, look, some of this is reactionary, Leanne. I want to put up this statistic. Are you a member of a church, synagogue, or mosque? Membership over the decades. So in 1940, 73% of Americans were, ha were a member of a church, synagogue, or a mosque. Look where we are in 2020. We're down to 47%. So mm -hmm. it does, how much of this rise of Christian nationalism is almost sort of like a, a reaction to the fact that we're becoming more secular as a country? Yeah, that's a huge problem for some of these people. They don't want that to happen. They don't like these trends, but they are also a very powerful minority in this country. I mean, you look at the abortion movement. They have, they organized 50 years ago after Roe v. Wade was decided, and they got their, the result that they wanted. And so there is some political belief among this group that they can continue to move the country, yeah. even though they are in a minority, in the direction that they want. You know, Stephanie, there's like, we've noticed in, in our show, for the most part, there is a one voting group in the Democratic coalition that does want to see, you know, religious texts sometimes be fused with public policy, and that's church-going African-Americans in particular. Mm -hmm. But Democrats in general are becoming more secular as a, as a party. Do you ever worry about that sort of uncomfortable partnership there? 
uncomfortable uh, partnership. Uh, just with, on religious stuff. Uh, yeah. um, no, I don't worry about mm -hmm. it. Um, you've got you know a, a Catholic president who very much um, believes in uh, people, you know, or believe having their own beliefs. Yeah. Um, and you know there are plenty of opportunities for um, Democratic politicians or electeds. Um, to show their faith. Look at uh, what's happening in Pennsylvania with Josh Shapiro. Mm -hmm. um, he's Jewish, uh, but he is not ceding churches mm -hmm. to Mastriano, who is very much a Christian na nationalist. Right. Um, and he's going, and he, he's very comfortable uh, preaching from the pulpit about why he's running for office, how his faith informs uh, what he believes politically. And that's exactly what Democrats need to keep doing because we should not cede the faith issue to Republicans. You know, Al, the Republican Party over the last 30 years was very much tied to many um, church folks. Ronald Reagan, folks one of the in, three in, in legs of this tool. Is, it, is, it, um, is this going to become a liability? Uh, probably. You know, I, I, I'm saddened by the fact that America is becoming more secular just from a spiritual point of view. I also am saddened by the fact that my Catholic Church and the non-evangelical Protestants have weakened themselves to a point where none is relevant. And so the most relevant political group in this in the religious movement right now are evangelicals and they have always had a different perspective than yeah. my catholic church or right. non-evangelical uh protestants and i think these guys are talking to evangelicals not the rest of us no i think you're absolutely right well i hope you catch the episode if you get a chance that's all we have for today thank you for watching we'll be back next week because if it's sunday it's meet the press thank you john Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.